cool venue, a bunch of shops and some eateries, live entertainment, coffee oh, shop. It was perfect. Yeah. It was like a great place to come on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon and just relax. People had their dogs yeah. with them. They had cups of coffee. Bunch of kids, yeah. yeah, kids playing and yeah. didn't capture any of that, of course. <laughs> yeah, definitely a hidden gem. What are you getting? I'm getting a large chai latte with light ice. Would you like a bottle of water? No water for me. So another strange thing here in Las Vegas is that we you know, still are not used to yet. So you walk down the street, I mean, it happens all the time. Uh-huh. You get a waft of wacky weed. Yeah. Of course it's legal here in Nevada, so you get a lot of it. Well, that wraps up day 2 of our hidden gems tour around Vegas and we topped it off in Vegas style by having the $12.95 prime rib special right here at the El Cortez and it was great. Very good. <laughs>
have to take in all of the touristy stuff that's on the Las Vegas Strip, such as? Uh, three of our favorites, Bellagio for the fountains. Of course, Paris is always pretty cool. And then Mandalay Bay for the aquarium. When you're walking the Strip, make sure that you check out, you said the Bellagio fountains, the Mirage volcano that erupts. Yep, that's cool yep. too. The roller coaster at New York, New York. Yep. The other thing would be the wildlife habitat at the Flamingo. That's something that we're going to try to get to tomorrow. We'll see if we can make that happen. So speaking of the fountains of Bellagio, there they go. Can you see them? think of Vegas, at least for me, the thing that I think of is the strip and all of its flashy neon lights. And walking through this particular location gave me a new appreciation for the humble beginnings of Las Vegas. So where we're at today is the old Mormon fort. Mm -hmm. And this is on the, the list of national historic sites here in the U.S. And it is one of the, I think the first buildings in Las Vegas. Of course, yeah. back in the day, this was nothing like it is today. This was a huge open valley that was green with plants and flora and fauna and That was water. super, super surprising to find yeah. out that Las Vegas actually means the meadows. Right. And this area where we're standing right now, even though it looks like it's dirt and cactus and very dry, was beautiful. Now the water feature behind me isn't part of the original spring system that fed this entire valley. But you can imagine after traveling for about, it took about 30, 35 days to get from Salt Lake City to this area. So you can imagine after about 30, 35 days coming to an area or an oasis like this would certainly be awesome. And you can just feel, I mean, even though it's winter time here, you can just feel the difference in temperature. The humidity is higher, so I would imagine Back in the day, this was a great respite for those weary travelers from 
Salt Lake City. Now, oddly enough, uh, the life of this fort was short-lived, only about two years. After about one year, Brigham Young sent a mine ex mining expert out to uh, try to mine some of the uh, lead ore in the area. It didn't pan out. There was a lot of strife and argument between you know, who was in charge and all these things. So after about two years, the fort was abandoned. And it became lots of other things through the years. It became a homestead for a family, a prominent family here in Las Vegas. And little did they know that 50, 60 years after they sold this land for relatively cheap, I think $55,000 back in, you know, the late 1800s was a lot of money. Uh, little did they know that it would become what it is today, probably right. worth millions of dollars an acre uh, in today's money. some of your thoughts when you go to places like this? Does it invoke any mo emotion for you? It does. I start to think about the pioneers coming in with their covered wagons and the terrain that they had to traverse to actually get here and the 100 degree temperatures that they had to um, endure. And then the work that it took for them to actually establish a fort made out of adobe bricks. That blows me away that that's even possible. The Mormons came into this area. I mean, these lands and this, these soils were about as infertile as you could get, right. and they had a great difficulty in growing their own food. Which you know, in an area like this, I mean, that's super important because I mean, basically, you're out in the middle of nowhere, and you're relying on the skills that you had back in your home mm -hmm. uh, to kind of translate here. Well, that wasn't always the case. Right. So the, you know, they did suffer a lot. Uh, with not being able to grow food and have enough food for everyone. We hope you enjoyed this review of Las Vegas 10 Hidden Gems. Be sure to check out part one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Let us know your favorite hidden gems in the comments below. And until next time, we'll see ya.